Thank you very much, Sean. I uh, hope everyone had a great lunch and that you don't want to sleep too much. Uh, I will actually uh, have uh, some mistakes, especially in my talk, too, just to make sure that you pay attention. I will uh, ask a question in the end of the, instead of you asking me a question. Just joking. <clears throat> uh, so hi, uh, uh, I'm Matthias. Uh, here is how you can contact me. I have also a terrible French accent. I hope you won't mind. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm originally a, a, a physicist. I did my PhD in biophysics, and now I spend uh, my time writing, uh, writing software. Uh, I mainly work on IPython and Jupyter, if you've heard about it. And I have the chance to uh, do that at, uh, in the beautiful Doe Library in Berkeley, which is just across the bay. So if you want to ever come talk to me, uh, you're welcome. And this is actually the windows of my, uh, of my, of my um, office. Uh, but. Uh, Enough about that, Conch is a side project I'm contributing uh, to. Uh, it's been created by uh, Anthony, Anthony Scopatz. Um, uh, by the way, it's Anthony's birthday uh, this week, so if you want to tweet at him that it's happy birthday, uh, I think he will, he will, he will like that. Um, I'm not one of the more active contributors. I'm uh, way far this way. Um, I'm mostly complaining when something breaks, uh, and also I own the domain name. Um, because I, I'm from Europe and I was able to buy the domain name for conch, which is conch.sh, uh, and that's uh, why I'm mostly participating. Uh, and I also use conch on my every, uh, every day, as my everyday shell. Uh, you can install it right now. It's Python 3, 4 plus only, because we use a lot of these new uh, awesome features that are on, on, on uh, Python 3. Um, and uh, some people want to port it to Python 2, but it seems to be quite complicated. Uh, you can still try if you want. Uh, and uh, you can come to see us on uh, uh, GitHub. Uh, yes, it's a GitHub protocol. It's shorter to write. And the last version was released a couple of days ago, uh, and it's uh, 0.4.5. Uh, uh, it's still pretty buggy. I wouldn't recommend it setting it as your login shell. But um, it's really great to use on an everyday. So first things, how do you pronounce it? Uh, uh, Sean was. Uh, nice enough that he pronounced it the way I pronounce it. Uh, but usually, how do you pronounce it? You can pronounce it the wrong way, uh, carefully, differently each time, or you only write it so that you don't have to ask the question. Uh, I go with conch, uh, where it's not uh, X, but a, a, a chi from, uh, from Greek, like in LaTeX, uh, which is not LaTeX because it has some other um, connotation. Um, you're free to disagree. You're free to call it differently. Uh, we just try to uh, stay to one pronunciation for the talk. It's also allowed uh, a lot of things like puns, because we like puns. There are puns everywhere in, uh, in, uh, in the code base, even on the documentation. So sometimes don't take things too literally. Um, so that we have our contributors, our configuration system, uh, constant question from a various corner, corner of the continent, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, why conch? Uh, because it's a shell, for those of you who don't know. And so conch is the only shell which is also a shell. Um, uh, anyway, so why conch? Um, because I can't remember half of the uh, bash syntax. I don't know how to make a loop when I uh, check for um, uh, equality of things, of strings. Uh, you have to pad strings with something because otherwise you have casting. Uh, and I'm writing Python all day, so I remember the Python syntax. I really like to have the Python ecosystem at our fingertips, uh, especially Python come with a package manager. Um, Bash does not. Uh, I've tried ZSH and installed oh my shell uh, with hundreds of plugins, and then it becomes slow and it's a nightmare to manage. I tried Fish, which has a um, beautiful uh, configuration system where you type Fish config, it spawns up a web browser. But the problem is that the Fish um, syntax is too different from the Bash syntax, and I get confused. Uh, and um, the other reason is that Shell is nice. Shell allows you to do things really quickly, uh, interactively. I'm I'm not writing a lot of Shell scripts, uh, but I move around my file system. I do a lot of operations on every day. I'm pretty sure most of you do that. Um, and uh, having a nice shell is nice, and having shell syntax is, is really great for many, many operations where I don't want to have a 20-line Python script to do that. Some people see conch as a Python plus the ability to have shell. I personally think about it more as a shell plus Python. Uh, they are roughly on the same level. You can use it uh, both ways. Um, when I want to use Python plus shell, I tend to use IPython. But I'm working on IPython, so I might know it more. Um, 
and if you want a more in-depth uh, um, tutorial uh, and talk about how um, Conch works, I will highly recommend to look at Anthony um, uh, Pycon's uh, talk, which is half an hour. He wrote most of Conch. He knows it much better than I do. Um, and uh, uh, we'll try to um, uh, do that. Um, uh, one of the other reasons why we, I use Conch is to do everything I'm told not to do. Uh, reminders, the uh, two talks that are after me are a guide, a guide to bite bad programming and evil hack in the service of marginally improved syntax. I think it says a bit about a theme for this afternoon in this room. Uh, so it's not because I show something here or that it's doable that you should do it. Though it's a really nice playground to um, basically see what you can do. One of the particular reasons is that Conch is completely re-implementing the Python parser plus some extra stuff. So if we want to make some syntax change to the Python, um, to the, um, Python parser and you want to have some custom AST uh, transform, we can probably do that easier in Conch than in Python itself. And it might be easier to get a patch in Conch because it's not stable yet than in, um, in Python uh, itself. Uh, David Powell said it's at the shell that no one uses. Uh, it's false. It's my everyday shell. I'm only working, uh, working in, uh, in, in, in Conch. Uh, usually, there is no dependency required. If you have only Conch on your system, it works. Uh, it requires uh, apply to lex parse, then it's used Python to compile, execute. There is a custom tokenizer and uh, AST transform step. Uh, I would strongly recommend um, in, uh, installing it with all the dependencies uh, like Prompt Toolkit and Pigments. Prompt Toolkit is a fantastic, li a fantastic library uh, by Jonathan Slenders, which is drop-in replacement for readline, except you have syntactic coloration live as you type, you have a real multi-line editing, and you have tab completion. And though you have um, that for free in Conch, because when you use Prompt Toolkit, we'll just 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 use that. Uh, use that. And um, so, uh, try to think of Conch of how you can do a shell in the 21st century if you have all the technology available now, and you can assume that everyone has a, a fast enough, decent enough computer where you're not uh, limited to append only lines. And, uh, and now I will try the risky demo. Uh, that's right now because it's, it's a live demo. It was sec 14 yesterday, so I hope it won't today. Uh, and if you have questions during the, the talk, uh, feel free to just shout something quickly and I can try to address it. Um, it would be nice. Okay, so this is, this is Conch, uh, almost a default, default install. I haven't, configured not, uh, I haven't configured nothing except the small things on the side here, um, which, um, helps me remember what I want to, to talk about. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do. I will just uh, remove the prompt on the side um, because uh, otherwise you probably won't, won't see on, um, on, on, the, on the screen. Okay. Uh, so let's start. So you can print. Do you see in the back? Yes? In the last row? Yes, okay, it's, it's great, so no need, no need to. Um, to zoom in uh, with the font. Uh, because prompt is just Python, uh, let's try to set the uh, prompt uh, to something like a triple chevron like we are, um, we are used to. And so here we are just in our, our pure Python. We can do uh, one, plus, uh, one plus one and, uh, and it works. Uh, and um, you can use basically all, all the normal syntax you're used to. You can do a loop and as you can see, I have, um, have multi-line. Make a square, and because we are Python uh, three four uh, three four only, we can import sys and sys dot uh, version info. Oops, yep. So there is. A uh, you see that we are on Python um, 3.5 uh, 3 here. So you can use you can use uh, things like uh, AsyncIO. So if you haven't played with AsyncIO, it's um, roughly like green thread, go routines, and so on and so forth. Uh, so you can you can uh, interleave tasks without having to, um, to to use thread. And so here we can just make um, a timer that um, sleep uh, at different interval. Uh, you see that we have to um, use um, I wait an async IO slip instead of time slip because we are using async, um, async IO. And uh, we can create two tasks that will uh, one print 
um, PyBay and the other print hello with uh, some uh, some emoji, and you see that the two tasks are uh, interleaving each other. So it's it's completely pure Python. You have um, everything that you have in, uh, available in Python. You want to install requests. You want to install an LTK. You want to install Matplotlib. You can do it, and you can use it in your shell, um, which is which is which is relatively great. Um, Though conch is for me at least um, I, I'm thinking it's mostly as a shell um, so if it's a shell I will just uh, get back the default prompt uh, we can uh, get back to what the dollars are after um, uh, you can you can use things like uh, ls you can look at all the uh, all the file files that are in in conch for example or look at your uh, current working directory or um, even echo um, Echo, echo a string and say that it's actually now it's uh, actually 111 um, and uh, uh, you can do quite something like use aliases like which you if you look carefully you will see that uh, it's not a normal which that you have you have some extra options uh, you can investigate on yourself on your systems if uh, if if you're uh, if you're installing that okay so we have uh, we s we saw that we could um, go ahead quickly the question why I'm Okay, so uh, how it differentiates. Um, we see that we have Python and we have uh, shell at the same time. You can have uh, the same thing, like we can have the same variable defined in the shell and in Python. Python take always precedence if it's valid Python. Um, so here I have ls, and if I, LS, if, I, if I assign one to ls and use ls, now ls is one. So conch will have seen that there is ls which is available uh, in the Python namespace and say, oh, okay, oh, this is now uh, Python, I will, uh, uh, use Python. If it detects that this is not valid Python, it will say, I will try to parse that as shell. And if you cannot parse it as shell, uh, then you throw a syntax error and say, okay, I don't know what to do with that. And we will see that there are more, more ways to distinguish, uh, we can force conch to distinguish, okay, this is Python or this is shell. Um, so that you, you, have, you have all your, um, your, your flexibility. And so now you are, um, you, can, you can mix uh, mixed, uh, the, the, the two. Um, so uh, pretty easily, we will first go with environment variable. Um, I never remember how to use environment variable in other shell. Um, you have dollars, but you have to set, and you have to not have uh, spaces um, uh, between uh, between the variable and the value it's set to. So with uh, with conch, is you just use a dollar and uppercase uh, because uppercase is uh, the default for uh, environment variable. Uh, and you use an equal sign to um, to assign. So here I cannot s change my home and change user, but if I want to set foo to 12, I will do that. And if I want to check uh, the value of foo, I will just do foo, and I get the value of 12. And we will see later that uh, the uh, environment variables are also typed when they are accessed, fr accessed from the Python side. And when they are accessed from the shell side, uh, that's their string because they are environment, uh, environment uh, variable. You can also uh, dynamically um, evaluate uh, an environment variable. So here, x is us uh, plus er upper string, its user, and if I put that in a dollar curly bracket, uh, it will look up uh, the corresponding environment variable, which allows to nice things. So then you can just loop through expression to generate environment variable, which is um, which is uh, quite useful. And you can use environment variable both from the shell and uh, from the Python side. Uh, here I'm using slightly different syntax to show you that it just works. It's just both in Python and, um, and in, uh, in shell. And I can, I can actually print, print foo as well. And I can do, oops, I can do foo dot. And uh, you see that I will get uh, the tab completion, tab completion, which is nice, which is um, like you can, you can go, go through it and, and, and cancel it. Uh, the other thing that you will see, which is slightly <coughs> different that auto completion, um, uh, is uh, this thing. I don't know if you see it in green. Um, it's um, called auto suggestion and not auto completion. And basically, you can start to type something. It look up in history, but you can bind it to something else. And here it say, oh, do you mean full bit length? I can press uh, the right arrow, and it will automatically complete. So you basically it replace your uh, up and comp uh, complete up um, automatically. So you you have less less keystroke, and you know what you will complete um, complete uh, complete two. And so. Uh, 
uh, variables are typed, so um, you can basically use type and uh, pass it uh, 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 an environment variable, and it will uh, tell you, okay, this is a boolean, a string, or it can be more complex things like an env, uh, env path. And so here you see that my path is a list-like things, which means that I can completely uh, use all the methods I want uh, from the Python side. I can uh, uh, use um, uh, indexing, I can slice it, or I can even slice uh, and sort. And so this is this is pretty pretty handy when you're accessing things from uh, the Python uh, Python uh, Python side. And uh, in particular, if I want to access the full environment, I can look up dynamically an ellipsis instead of look up, looking up a string, and I will get a dictionary of all my environments. So I can look uh, look up easily or loop through all my uh, environment variable and do stuff with it. Like for example. Uh, pop all the things that uh, contain um, conch in it. Um, let's see if we can uh, if if we can do that. Um, okay, so let's do a list comprehension. So here is um, yeah, coding. It's it's a bit it's a bit long. So here I will just look up everything with uh, with conch in it. Okay, and. Boom. I have only only things with conch, and if I want to modify, I can also say set value to to whatever. Okay. So. Aliases, yes. Um, so unlike uh, normal shell where aliases are just command, in in conch you you can uh, define aliases, though so you have to. Uh, Assigned to a specific a specific dictionary, we have the uh, aliases uh, dictionary, which is um, a, a Python variable, and you can assign either a tuple, and when you assign a tuple, it will um, behave exactly as um, <coughs> as a normal shell alias. But as you can see here, I have some aliases that are that are actually actually some uh, s some some functions that are Python functions. So let's see what we can uh, we can do with that. Um, so here uh, it's a Konami code up, up, down, down, left, right, 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 BA, and uh, you can do something like all your bays are belong to us, or you can also do a function. So when you assign a lambda function, uh, what you, what you will do a function or a lambda function, uh, the function takes two arguments. It takes all the parameters you pass to the function and standard in as a name uh, argument uh, as, a, as, as a second function. So for example, here. Uh, we can we can we can um, just make a lambda function to uh, to be quick, and now we can measure whatever, uh, and, and it, it will um, it will just work. You can also do it with um, a, a real function, a real Python function that takes um, two arguments, um, and uh, depending on whether if you know Monty Python, whether it's a wish, uh, a wish, or if uh, it's not a wish, uh, it it will either either it will burn it or, or let it live. Um, and so you assign to the dictionary, and uh, if you ask if the witch floats, yeah, burn, and otherwise, uh, Arthur is probably a king because he's not covered in shit. If you've seen, uh, if you've seen the, um, the Monty Python, um, Monty Python Holy Grail. Um, okay, so let's continue. I, tr I tried to pick up some of the, my workflow I was using during the, the, last, the last few weeks. Uh, I've been working on, on Warehouse, um, which is a new uh, Python uh, PyPI. Um, so, if, if, if uh, huge kudos to everyone who is working on, on warehouse on the Python packaging, uh, they are really making an, 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 an awesome job. And so, one of the things you need to do is to actually uh, start Docker. Uh, okay, it will take some time because uh, Docker needs uh, need to start. Uh, I should have started that before. Um, and uh, one of the things you need to do when it started is you need to actually evaluate a command in. Um, in bash to source the uh, correct environment uh, variable. Uh, the problem is conch, come on, uh, conch is using a, a different, uh, different, um, a different syntax, so you cannot just, run. okay, that's great. Let's check, sorry, docker, mach docker machine env. Yeah, so basically, it's telling me uh, I need I need to to export that. Though you see that here is using export to export the environment variable, and uh, having compatibility with other shell because I have a lot of tools that have been written with other shell. Um, 
uh, it's really important because you don't want to rewrite everything in Python. And so conch uh, allow uh, to use source bash or source dash fish or source dash zsh to source every other shell, um, other shell script. And so let's see here if we can do that. Um, so yes, we can do that. We can um, basically what we can do is assign the thing we just did. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so here we just we just evaluate Docker machine env in a subshell and assign that to a Python variable. We can look look at what is in result, and now what we can do is actually evaluate uh, that using source bash, and so. Um, we can do source bash and uh, use at syntax. You will see that the at syntax allow you to evaluate some Python directly into the shell. And so basically, this this is Python. It says what is the value of uh, of result and pipe it into into bash. And now, if everything went fine, I should just have all my Docker environment which is set, and I can continue. So it means that I can easily have long scripts which are written in a foreign shell, and this foreign shell can completely uh, interoperate with uh, with conch, uh, which is, for example, all the Git completion uh, scripts that you have online that allow you to do Git star and tab and get some things, or automatically you get it for free in in conch if you have uh, those installed for uh, for Bash. And now I want to remove everything. I can just um, do a list comprehension. Uh, the looking up uh, ellipsis is actually the environment variable, and I can pop the key if uh, key uh, has Docker. And now, if I check, I just should I just uh, should have deactivated this specific environment uh, with Docker. So, which means that all your workflows that used to work in Bash and rely on some specific um, Bash-specific or uh, ZSH-specific things uh, will, will, will work um, as is. You can also alias that. So here I, am to, I have to use uh, foreground in particular because um, it has to, there is a bug in conch I need to, to, to fix, so I just did that for, for the demo. And uh, I can use the same uh, thing I did before, but putting it in a lambda. And now I can just use undock if I want to deactivate my, my GitHub, uh, my uh, Docker, um, Docker environment. Here it's uh, defined interactively, but I can put, put, uh, put that in a, a conch RC, RC file. Actually, I didn't need to go through Python, so I can just source bash Docker machine env uh, and uh, check that Docker in, is in it and uh, just uh, remove it. Oops, that's a little too long for. Uh, that's uh, like and crap Docker. You see that I don't have I don't have Docker in my um, in my uh, environment uh, variables. And so that's one source to answer one of your question. You ask how can you uh, detect whether it's environment or um, uh, it's shell or, or, or Python. You can use a dollar parenthesis syntax that is, tells conch this is has to be uh, um, a shell, and you can use the at parenthesis syntax that we have uh, seen a bit before to say what's inside here is actually Python. Um, well, of course, if it's not Python, it will uh, crash because it's not the right um, the right syntax. Um, okay, so. Uh, that's what well, basically normal uh, quick workflow um, to um, to show you um, what we can do, and uh, I told you that you can use all the power of uh, Python and Bash. So because you have aliases, you can use aliases when you pipe things, and uh, I don't know if you use a request library. Re request is uh, uh, HTTP for humans, so it's pretty easy to uh, to use requests to fetch things. But many people are still uh, uh, reticent to to use libraries they don't know, and many scientists will use things like wget or curl to um, to uh, to do some analysis, and they want to have curls and requests in the middle. So, for example, you you might you, you might want to to use wget and uh, or curl and pipe on into your uh, standard library uh, JSON. Uh, um, uh, functions, and you have also the opposite people that don't know how to use curl and or wget, want to use request, but are huge fan of uh, grep 
uh, said and all these tools uh, because they know how to do it, they know how to do regular expression, um, and uh, that's how that's how uh, how they work. And when you want to do something which is a one-off things, you just don't want to write a script, uh, write a script on that. So let's see if we can um, have something like that. Um, so let's go with uh, a request first. Uh, so can I use external library like requests? So we need to uh, import it, and we can, um, it's a little long, but we can get, for example, uh, pep, uh, pep20. Does anyone remember what pep20 pep is? There's enough Python, correct. Uh, so I have response, and the response have a status code, which is 200, yay, the Wi-Fi is working. Uh, and a content that somewhere has uh, the Zen of Python. So here I'm going to get the content, decode it, um, wrap it in at parentheses, uh, echo it because I want it to be a, a shell command, and then I will try to uh, pipe it and grep for um, for better. And here I have uh, I have all my um, I have a all the comments on the pep on the Zen of Python that have uh, that have better. I can also grab this to see if um, uh, if they have uh, if they have the import these things. And indeed, they say that you need to do import this. We can check. We can import this, and we see that we have the Zen of Python. So here you can use request, and you can pipe it to um, uh, to um, to grab. Uh, let's try the other direction. See if we can um, use wget first. Um, okay, so let's import JSON and let's try to get uh, everything from Conch. So this is uh, this was a, a Conch um, API page to list the repository. You see that uh, JSON is a bit is a bit long. So now we will just wrap um, uh, wrap things and uh, to get get the curl and pass it into JSON loads, uh, loads of strings. So the dollar parentheses will evaluate the subprocess, making it to a string, pass it into Python, Python gets JSON load, and so we should just get, um, uh, just get uh, an object. Yes, we have a Python dictionary. And so I could have assigned this dictionary to some things, but um, I should be able to just loop over, uh, over with a list comprehension and look at the repository name. So let's let's try to do that. So JSON load, same thing. We do the long, um, the long things, and bang, we get all the uh, the repository name. And uh, there have not been much that I had to do. Um, it's it's pretty natural to do that. If you would have to do, to do that in in Bash, uh, it would be quite quite difficult. You would have to use tool like JQ, uh, which is uh, which allow you to parse JSON with custom language um, expression, and uh, I I'm never able to do that. Okay, uh, what else can you do? You can do more more advanced uh, advanced stuff. Let's see if we can. Um, we can we can modify things on the pep repository. The pep repository is nice, but the pep repository has a lot of RST pep uh, that are uh, actually with a TXT extension, and so they don't render on GitHub because I have a TXT extension, and GitHub will um, uh, will uh, will assume they are plain text. Um, you can make a Python loop that uh, renames things, but removing things on uh, on the repository of Python is difficult, especially if you want to do a Git MV. And also, you have to um, glob things the correct way to only do to only get pep file. So we will we will use the advantage that is conch if you use backtick. Uh, the thing which is inside backtick will be uh, interpreted as a regular expression, and you will get the, the list of files that match this regular expression. Uh, it's kind of the star glob syntax, except it's regular expression. So often you know you, you know it uh, better than uh, the glob syntax, uh, which has also some backtrack that I never remember uh, remember either. Um, so let's see if we can uh, if we can do that. Uh, so sure, I haven't handled it before, and uh, here we're using the. Um, I just show you the, the, the glob syntax. Here we look at all peps that have uh, four digits and with the two first digits that are the same as the two other digits. It's just to show you that. Uh, that's pretty hard to do when you're using the normal um, normal star globbing. 
uh, sorry. And uh, now uh, we want to um, list all files. And now we will use the file variable, which is a Python one, to loop over. And uh, directly, um, if the pep has a line which says content type is RST, just use git mv for this pep. <laughs> So you do a normal, uh, a normal loop, uh, you open your file, you can uh, check if your file has content type RST in it. And if it has a content type RST here, you will do a, a git MV. And now, because you are on a shell line, because git is not in the Python namespace, you will interpret the name that you just created for the for loop here and you will move this particular file to the same file where you replace txt by, uh, by rst. And it takes a few seconds, and now, boom, it's done. And you can see that uh, conch will automatically say that my branch has been dirty. I was on master, master was clean here, and master is dirty here. I can do git status. You see that all my pep files have been renamed, and I can git stash if I want again and get my, my, my branch clean. And all that you don't have to set up. Uh, conch knows about git. And if he doesn't know about your specific, uh, your specific version controlling system, because we have all the power of Python, we can just pip install an extension for conch that will teach, uh, teach conch about, about your um, specific, uh, specific huge case. So I'm starting to be short on time. So let's try to do something a little bit crazier. Um, I will try to go to the conch directory. Ooh, that's bad. Live demo. I cannot even quit, so let's, let's quit that. Let's restart conch. Let's see if we can get some help. And go to talks, talks. So for those of you who haven't uh, seen that, I have some help and some part of the talk are not actually typed by me. Okay, so I was on section 20. That's something I developed uh, just for, for PyBay. So let's retry. Let's do something like um, prompt equal. Let's look at a prompt. And let's do prompt equal prompt dot replace. And let's replace um, So user and host name by nothing. That should make the prompt shorter. Yay! Um, so yes, so that's that's the prompt environment variable, and uh, it works as a normal uh, un uh, prompt environment variable like PS1, uh, where you have section except it's using uh, uh, Python string formatting. So you can replace all of these things by uh, a key, and you can provide a function that will compute all of these values. So the prompt can be either a string like that, which is simple, or you can define your own, own custom function that will. Um, uh, build the prompt at uh, every step of your environment. And because it's an as asynchronous prompt, you could even have a prompt that uh, displays the time, the current time, and updates every second. So let's see. Let's try to grab through all the um, conch source tree for all the function definition and uh, count how many times we have the same uh, function definition, uh, uh, name of a function definition which is the same again and again. Uh, I'm often trying to, uh, to, to, um, to sort things in, 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 um, in directory like that. One of the issues I have, I never remember how to use sed to uh, strip white space from each uh, side of, uh, of the line. So you see here that I have, I, I will have def, uh, def um, definition functions that are four space from the beginning of the file. But if I have a nested class, I will have definitions that are eight space, or even things that are uh, nested, um, nested more. Um, so here, if you know how to use um, 
cut. So cut allow you to um, uh, to remove a specific a specific part of your input. And here you see that uh, I have sometimes spaces and sometimes I don't I don't have spaces. Uh, and uh, I want to strip that. How can I do that? I don't know how to do that in Bash, but I know how to do it in Python. I can just take a string, I split the string on line, uh, and for each line I call strip, and then I recombine the strings with um, new lines. And I should have my uh, my white space at the end of each um, at the end of, of of the line that are that are gone. And I can I can just uh, what I can do is just uh, define that uh, as, as an alias. So I will call this alias strip. And I make a lambda function, and it takes all the things in standard in, it splits the line, uh, and uh, it recombines them. And now that it's in an alias, I can just pipe things through. So I, can ju I should just be able to get to uh, use back this expression and pipe it to strip. And uh, it, should, it should just work. Uh, boom. I don't have my uh, my white space. And now what I can do is you cannot either with cut, if you know how to use cut, you cannot use parentheses as a delimiter. So if I want to get just the function name, I cannot pass the parentheses as, 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 um, as an option. So I can define uh, an alias on the fly directly on, uh, whoops, what I pipe. So I'm going to zoom a bit out so that you can see that. So here you can see that I definitely directly made an alias uh, online here, and I was able to remove the part which is, which is with the parentheses. And so let's uh, do the same thing, but let's cut more and try to count and sort things um, and try to find how many functions are, uh, are in, in each thing. And now you can, uh, basically I, I sorted that I use unique to get the count. I resorted to have the number uh, in increasing value, and I parsed. Uh, I'm out of time, so I will I will I will probably go uh, a, a bit a bit further. And uh, so you see that I got all of the function uh, call, and now I can do nice things like I can directly use um, matplotlib to plot some statistic on my uh, on my uh, on my code base. Okay. So let's see if we can get Matplotlib to work. So you can just import Matplotlib. Because we are in a terminal, you have to uh, tell it to use AGG not to try to plot anything uh, before importing PyPlot. Uh, and I can use um, NumPy um, to, make, to, make, to make some tests. So here, here I'm just doing with fake data, but I could have a parse, which is um, just before. And um, so I can plot things on my matplotlib. I can save as a specific file. And because here I'm in item two, what I can do is actually get this figure data, base64 encode it, and I should be able to uh, display, it, uh, display it in line. For that, I need to define a, a, a lambda function, which is, this is specific, this is a specific syntax, which is only I'm term two and some terminal on, on, on Linux. Um, and you can, you can basically directly get, uh, use that to, um, to get things in line in your terminal. So here I can uh, do directly have my image here uh, from, from the data. And uh, what I can do, I can directly also do something like um, plot. I think it was num I had before, or res. And uh, what I can do also is, if you don't have this ability to display an image in lines, uh, you can ask conch to convert it to ASCII art for you. Ta-da! You have your plot in line. Uh, that's not really useful, but you can actually zoom out a lot. And it will take quite some time. But if you do the same, after a few seconds, oops. Yay, you have your graph. So you can have your graph in line. I don't know why you would like to use that. Maybe if you're on SSH and you cannot, uh, you cannot really use it. Uh, and that's, uh, that's about it for, uh, for, for, for the demo. 
that went not too bad. Uh, I didn't go into all the detail. You can uh, have captured and uncaptured sub-processes with either dollar or bank, and they will either stream or not stream the data to you, uh, which can be um, useful depending on the process, uh, on the thing you want to do. You have, like IPython, you have help and super help with question mark or double question mark, which will try to fetch as much information as possible you want from either um, sub-process or uh, a, Python, uh, a, Python, a Python function. Uh, you can customize your prompt, which is completely asynchronous. And of course, we have our own, um, our own file format, which is XSH, which uh, is parsed as conch scripts, where you can mix and match your uh, Python and, uh, and your shell. And we have an import hook, which means that if you install the import hook, you can even import XSH XSH file from within Python, and because they are compiled as Python uh, AST, it's just completely transparent from the Python uh, uh, for the Python interpreter. So you can use conch from uh, from inside. Um, from inside Python. Uh, we have much richer data structure for many of, of our uh, internal uh, object representation, like the history is full JSON with timestamp before you ran the command, after you ran the command. Um, yeah, it has a return value, so if you are a data scientist and you want to log all your work, this will really help you because you can come back afterward and say, hey, where did I put that here? And you can dig into, um, into things. And we have our contrib package, uh, which are a lot of extension, like the one you showed me that helped me to type during, uh, during this demo. Uh, it was not completely recorded. It was like half recorded, half live, and you can post things at any time and resume. It's still, uh, still using threads uh, with locks, so it's not, um, uh, it's, it's, it's not yet ready for, uh, for, for, uh, for broad, uh, broad usage. And because we are using Prompt Toolkit, we have also a lot of hooks. Like if you have a few lines that are starting, uh, starting to, to grow and you want to actually edit it in a Max or in Vim, then you can actually bind a shortcut. Uh, which will uh, get the input, send it to Emacs. You can edit in Emacs, finish your things, and say to Emacs, hey, I'm finished, and you will have your prompt that edits, and you don't have to do your copy-pasting with, with a mouse. Um, and we have syntax coloration as you type, as you, as, as you saw, and all the things are, are, are configurable. There are more crazy stuff that I don't understand. Like, for example, uh, there is this context manager because we have our own AST, and the context manager don't execute the block which is inside. It actually gets a string of what is inside. With that technically, you can do whatever you want with this, and you could have a different language. It's still roughly limited by the fact that uh, the thing which is inside here uh, has to be a Python syntax, but we should be able to get uh, to, to remove that. And uh, let's try to get uh, Shell and Python uh, to work uh, to work together. And I'm uh, running out of time, so please come ask questions uh, later if you want, and I will be around. Thank you. Quick question, maybe here. Do you consider this uh, beta, post beta? What's going to take to move from zero point, which always signal, okay, I had better play, but not serious music, to 1.0? Do you have a list of to do things, the things that are, must go in before you are going to call it 1.0? I think for now, uh, I don't know how many people use it, and it's a really nice playground. So I doubt many of the core developers want to release a 1.0 because it's forced us to start to have things that are stable. And it's really fun to play with that and break things all the time. Uh, I'm using it every day. Uh, as a shell, I wouldn't recommend it to on, on production. I don't see. And anyway, if you want stable code, uh, you don't want to use to to, to use conch conch. I, that's my my own opinion. Uh, is is something that is really 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 great as long as you're you're using it on every day and if you want to be to be uh, productive because it has a nice features that make it interactive. Uh, I guess at some point when we have an enough mass of people behind, we want a 1.0, but you would have to ask Anthony, which is the main developer, uh, what he's thinking about that. Sorry if it's disappointing you. Though, uh, one thing I would hope is that this allows us to explore some things that, might, that we might want to push to the Python side after a few years, because we can explore a, a lot of things.
oh, with a uh, and. Uh, so we have uh, own custom lexer parser and everything, and it's uh, half context sensitive and half context insensitive. So sometimes it's still buggy. So for example, we also have the feature request that and a n d and or o r would also do this kind of double ampersand and double. Uh, oh yeah, the question was how do you distinguish with uh, ampersand ampersand and and uh, pipe pipe for or? Uh, and so, for example, we had bug reports where people, uh, someone had a, a homemade movie that had and in the name, and the two parts of the name were actually being uh, being expressed, uh, I mean, trying to be parsed as sub-processes, and it was trying to do, oh, I don't find this sub-process, and I don't find this sub-process either. Uh, you have way around that, which is because you're, you're also on Python, you can force one way to parse by using strings. If you're using strings, you say, okay, this is a string, and Python will take precedence. And sometimes you still have to go uh, through some hoops, but it's, um, it's becoming rarer and Error. A few months ago, you, you had a syntax issue every couple of days, and now it's, uh, it's every month. We have one, one request. One more question. Okay, no question. Thank you very much, and uh, looking forward for the next talks on how to do a bad programming. <laughs>